measles, diphtheria, scarlet fever, and whooping cough. All of them diseases that are all but history, thanks in part to the United States public health system. Dr. John LaPook takes a look at our public health workers and finds their tough job has become even tougher. Monkeypox is now spreading around the world and putting the U.S. public health system once again on the front lines in a battle to keep the country safe. I've heard many people say, oh no, it's going to be another pandemic just like COVID. What would you say to them? We have been working extraordinarily hard and we are still in a position where we can contain this. Dr. Rochelle Walensky, director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, says the CDC has been responding aggressively, educating health professionals and patients alike. There's no crystal ball, of course, but do you see monkeypox getting out more widely to the general population? I think we were, are going to see more cases before we see less, and that is because we will have more testing, we have more education out there, people know what they're looking for and how to test for it. The total number of cases in the U.S. has been growing steadily and is now more than 2,800. While anyone can get monkeypox, the virus is spreading predominantly among gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men. To our knowledge right now, it does look like most of the transmission is happening with close personal contact. With the U.S. public health system front and center, we thought this would be a good time to explore what the system actually does. Why is public health different than the practice of medicine? In medicine, it's the individual that's the patient. In public health, you can think of the individual, the community, the planet as the patient. Michelle Williams is dean of faculty at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. She says the estimated 270,000 public health workers in this country are unsung heroes. Do you think that one of the problems is that the public really doesn't value public health enough because they take it for granted? Yes. When public health works, nothing bad happens. So you don't notice that that child that had a spill on the bicycle got up and is just fine because they're wearing a helmet. Public health workers have a lot on their plate, including eliminating disease, cutting down on workplace injuries, ensuring clean water and better sanitation, reducing injuries from fires and car crashes, and keeping our food safe to eat. Here I'm checking to make sure he's not stacking dishes. You know, if you stack wet dishes on top of each other, it builds up bacteria. We don't want that. Trey Williams is a health inspector in Oklahoma City. This is the kind of stuff that the general public has no idea about, right? They're not seeing this. Right, right, absolutely. Get These forward. pastries here and below we keep for two days. The cakes we keep for three. The cookies we keep for a week. The U.S. public health system has a long history. In 1799, Boston set up one of the country's first health departments, led by none other than Paul Revere. Since 1900, advances in health and safety have increased the U.S. life expectancy by an estimated 25 years. Still, during the COVID pandemic, local health departments have had to scramble and improvise. We're providing this service free to the public. Patrick McGough heads up the Oklahoma City County Health Department. People just drive on through. They don't have to have an appointment, nothing. COVID vaccinations, boosters, flu shots, and smiling eyes. We'll do the, um, the COVID in the left. Does that sound good? Yeah. It's warmer, it's friendly, you're in your own car. The structure of the public health system is extremely complex. Local and state departments, educational institutions, private industry, and, at the top, government agencies like the Department of Health and Human Services, the National Institutes of Health, the CDC, and the FDA. No one person runs the whole system and not every branch has the resources it needs. Why in the world would anybody still need to use a fax? Well, basically, it's about the doctor's offices. They don't all have secure forms of transferring information about you as a patient. Thank you, uh, Kay, very much. The technology to securely share health information electronically has existed for decades. Yet at the height of the pandemic, doctors were faxing orders for COVID tests to this machine. We need a healthcare information exchange that is just at our fingertips, that the health departments and uh, the hospitals and the primary care physicians can all share information so quickly and easily. But that's not what we have. 
Instead, there's a patchwork of reporting systems across the country that don't effectively talk with each other, critical during the early stages of outbreaks like COVID and monkeypox. And Dr. Walensky says there are more challenges. Does the CDC have the authority to demand that public health agencies around the country send information to it? We do not. Reporting cases from around the country is voluntary. Do the data systems exist right now to adequately collect all the information needed? They don't. We've made a lot of progress during COVID, but we still have a lot of work to do. Would really be helpful if we had the capacity, the data systems, the workforce, the laboratory systems in place, the public health infrastructure truly in place so that we could deliver um, health to all of America. Why don't we have those systems in place right now? There has been a chronic, decades-long underfunding of a public health infrastructure in America. And Michelle Williams says the public health system faces a brain drain. We know that burnout is real and it is pervasive. When was your last vacation? Um, I haven't had a vacation. Well, your calendar is already crazy. So. It's estimated that since 2008, at least 38,000 state and local public health jobs have disappeared. The collision of public health and politics hasn't helped. Lots of hate mail, lots of hate email. And in Oklahoma City, Patrick McGough is feeling the heat. Texts that were awful, all kinds of stuff. So when people question your motives, what does that feel like? So I see that I have staff on the front lines giving everything they have, their family time, their own health, their own finances, and then to be attacked and called all kinds of things. It didn't just happen because the pandemic arrived. Something else happened. Something caused people to lose faith, and it's to the public's demise. It may do away with public health. Despite these challenges, what Michelle Williams is seeing at Harvard makes her optimistic. What's happening with applications to your public health school? We have a year-over-year 50% -year increase in our applications. How do you explain I that? They are running towards the opportunity to have an impact in this world. And I am inspired by that because we are going to prevail. It will take more time, but we are going to prevail.